So this event, we're going to integrate eco-psychology, old and new Wiccan traditions, and uh, social permaculture. Well, what, is, uh, what do you mean by social permaculture? Well, social permaculture is the social structure that people in a permaculture setting would be able to use to relate with one another and projects on the land. Permaculture was a term coined by Bill Mollison in the 1950s. It's a contraction of permanent agriculture, and what it is, it's an umbrella of technologies where alternative types of uh, methods for growing food and, and nurturing and restoring habitats can happen. So a lot of old, a lot of old uh, ways of growing things and tending the soil and, and water quality have been incorporated into the permaculture umbrella. Hi, I'm Walt. I'll be in charge of the uh, biomass to methanol workshop at Surrender. Uh, this will be a chance for people interested in the scientific part of ecosexuality and how this can work toward building a community, a sustainable community of ecosexuals. Uh, in biomass to methanol, we use the forest to convert to woody biomass that can then be used to fuel the lives of people living close to the land so that they have a quality life. Okay, and so it's basically taking that, that overall philosophy and applying it to a more social bent? Yes, it's, take, yeah, it's, taking, the, it's taking the larger physical uh, structure of permaculture and putting it down to how people can relate to one another. Okay. In a way that is actually sustainable instead of one-sided. Yeah, I think they call it, they call it a horizontal, horizontal uh, distribution of power instead of a vertical distribution okay. of power. Okay, yeah. So treating others as sort of equal uh, human beings in a community as opposed to boss, employer, employee, employer relationships or leader, uh, servant. This is radically identity. different than the hierarchies that we all kind of were introduced to and in, hmm. you know in our in our lives. Uh, I heard a friend from Burning Man refer to it as a confederacy of equals. Okay. Hmm. And so taking it out of the city definitely puts it in a different setting where that's hmm. much more possible. Yeah, and traditionally people have come out to the woods and they've had events out here where there was a uh, kind of it was kind of wild, you know. I mean, I I know a lot of people who have good and bad memories of attending gatherings in the woods of Cascadia throughout the last few decades. <laughs> and uh, what we're just trying to do is we're trying to do something a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so going from the idea of a person as as an individual cell to more of more of a part of a larger ecosystem. Yeah, that's that, that's that's pretty much it. That's that's really good. Uh, another way I look at it is. We're going from a one-dimensional relationship with our host to a multi-dimensional relationship with our host, which would uh, means it fosters inclusivity and consensus-based decision-making is a big part of that too. Mm. Let's see. I've I've been to a few I've been to a few events here in the Pacific Northwest over the last few years, and some of them come really close to being ideal, but there's different parts of it missing. So. With this event, I went to uh, an ecosexual event in uh, Portland last year, and it was it was great. And I saw some old and new friends, and there was there was the thought of what if this event, instead of being in the city, was in the country in a natural setting. And then uh, we met our friends Andrew and Lindsay and Walt and Terry, and over the winter it just an event plan came together, something that's a little bit more inclusive for all types of people who want to enhance their relationship with the Earth. They want to have a better relationship with the Earth than they, than they previously had. Mm. And we're showing some of the things that we've learned and, and we'd like to share them. And then if you're curious right. and you want more detail about our structure, you can read the entire events uh, outline what mm -hmm. we're doing every couple of hours every 15 minutes i think and you can read our sexual etiquette guidelines on the website there we really gave this an incredible amount of we thought <laughs> um, and we're creating a really safe healthy sex positive environment for you um, i'm used to that from being at the center for sex and culture in san francisco and 
the Center for Sex Positive Culture in Seattle and teaching there. So there are some things I've taken for granted mm -hmm. that I find I need to explain mm -hmm. uh, to people. And when I started getting into the website and reading some of the details about the plans for the event that were going to happen and whatnot, I realized that basically these were people who were trying to do a lot of the same things that our circus has been trying to do. Bring information about how to build sustainable community in environments where we want to have a consensus-based model of interaction. Well, this really does require a lot of thought because this is not our standard operating procedure. And I'm sure that all of you at this point have seen what happens when you're at one of these events and suddenly, out of nowhere, the power dynamics get weird and suddenly the consensus model breaks down and now we're squabbling over power again instead of just getting on about our enjoyable business. And that's really, really hard to see, especially when you're talking about, say, a BDSM play party or just a orgy that naturally arises. You know they do. And you know there's always drama. Always! But there doesn't have to be. There's ways we can avoid that. And these people know how. You know, they've studied these things even. They have fancy hats. But more importantly, they've been doing it for a really long time. And they can model this to you in an environment where all you have to do is come and play. All you have to do is come and not block what's trying to happen and as long as everybody does that we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna learn a lot and we're going to learn a lot about how we can use these very same techniques in our own settings back in the city and how to take that model into our everyday lives and I think that it's a really important step. I think it needs to happen and I think it needs to happen soon. I'm getting tired of going to play parties and big orgies where everything constantly is turning to crap because people don't know how to deal with themselves or one another in that environment because we simply haven't had enough go good role models, frankly. and. These are those people. And we want to talk a little bit about the rituals that we're going to do. So the first thing we want you to know is that when you come up to the registration booth, you get to choose from a little choosing hat. Mm -hmm. And there's one of four elemental paths. So it'll be earth, air, air fire, and, and water. water. Mm -hmm. And they all have wonderful initiation rituals on Saturday morning. And we're super excited about that. And then Saturday afternoon, there's going to be a catharsis ritual, a place for you to get in touch with whatever feelings you have about species extinction, mm -hmm. the decimation of you know the planet, um, whatever's holding you back from being actively involved in you know taking a stand for environmental preservation and the protection of your love of the earth. Mm -hmm. So then. Saturday evening, we'll be moving into evening activities for right. the elemental paths. Right. And there'll be ecstatic dance. Right. And there's also storytelling mm -hmm. and snuggling for mm -hmm. the air path. There'll be an erotic, a facilitated erotic temple. For earth path. For the earth path. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, water is going to have shamanic sound mm -hmm. healings mm -hmm. with Jessa. That's going to be fabulous. Right. Oh, and then on Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. people get a chance to talk about the activism they're involved mm -hmm. in, and we'll do a commitment ceremony mm -hmm. to how we're going to take care yeah, of the earth. Yeah, commitment to the earth. So Yay. we're using ritual as part of surrender, basically, to engage and embody our, our commitment. Our love, and mm -hmm. our love for the earth. Mm -hmm. And we'd love you to join us. So why are you involved in being the earth path leader in surrender? Uh, well... I'm wild about mushrooms. I, I love everything about the earth. Uh, for me, the earth path is... I've been able to help 
heal myself from pretty bad depression and just a dissociation from growing up in this culture. It's kind of a violent culture, you know. A lot of people have hurt. And there's a lot of ideologies in our mother culture that are pretty bad. And from what I've seen, there's other ways of doing things. And it's taken me a few years to find the people who are doing these different soft technologies or employing different modalities for everyday life and uh, this seems something this seems like something that I could grow into and that I could I could heal myself with I'm very interested in very interested in healing you know and um, as long as I'm alive there's going to be work to do every day I go to work it's kind of another reminder of that power structure right there that you're talking about so how are, how are you doing it a little differently uh, the, this time around we're going to have uh, four elemental paths. We're going to have uh, the earth path, which I'm leading. We're going to have an air path, fire path, and a water path. And these are going to be uh, separate. They're going to be separate but similar rituals to where people can connect with these different elements in uh, the context of shared space. So we're choosing a set and setting where we can have these different things available for people to learn and engage with. So I don't really know what's in store for the air, fire, water path, but I can tell you a little bit about the earth path. We're what going to be meeting yeah. all of the organisms underneath our feet. We're going to be witnessing ourselves in their environment. It's earth first, all living organisms second, people third, breathe fourth. <laughs> I'm working with some uh, very wise and wonderful people, and we're going to come up with something that we think will it'll be an additional tool in uh, the ecosexuals handbag for uh, what to do in group settings we're employing a lot of different uh, we're employing consensus based decision making there's holistic peer counseling there's a few other things which have really proven to be effective that are a little bit outside of the mainstream uh, as far as psychotherapy goes and that's where the that's where the ecotherapy comes in, where we just connect with the earth in a more meaningful way, whereas where we're centered in it as opposed to separate from it. And through that process, people will be able to take part in, uh, in uh, personal healing? That's what I believe. I believe okay. it's going to be transformational for everybody who comes. And uh, people should buy their tickets now because there's deadlines looming, and the price is going to be going up a few bucks each well, a couple weeks. So, All right, then. If you're interested, I suggest you... Age soon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how can I find out more about this event? Uh, details are at ecosexconvergence.org. All right. Cool.